Hey guys, I'm Aaron, and today I'm going to take a second shot at making nice looking autumn leaves. So, a couple weeks ago, I did a fun little video where we took an image of a maple leaf and we used it to cut a shape out and then put some colors on it, bent it with True Bend, and then used random tools to make a grid into some random shapes. So what we got was this, this thing, that. Um, which was good. I thought it was fun. It kind of cool, turned out cool. Some, some practical applications to that process. But you guys had some ideas, uh, like using the texture of the image instead of a color or using random tools to not just turn the leaves, but actually apply them randomly to maybe like the lawn or something like that. Uh, cool ideas. And, uh, I thought, well, it's still fall. It's still autumn, so uh, you know we could still do another video about this. So we're gonna do this again. This is gonna be autumn leaves part two, uh, the the reautuming, um, and we're gonna go through and actually make these even better. Uh, a little bit more complicated workflow. This is this is probably one of the situations where we're taking a simple thing and maybe going a little bit further than necessary. But you know, some stuff can be learned and some original uh, content can be created. And uh, yeah, so we'll link to the first video if you haven't seen it. Um, good stuff there. Some of the stuff I'm going to go over today is going to kind of get glossed over because I'm assuming you've seen the last one. So if you haven't already, go ahead, go down in the description, click on that, watch that, and we'll we'll wait here for you to get back. Welcome back. So let's go in and make a next level autumn leaf. Let's do it right now. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and hop over to this. This should look familiar. This is where we started last time. Uh, I'm going to do a couple things. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make a copy of this. I'm going to hold on to this one right here. And I'm going to take this one rather than right now it's an image. I'm going to go ahead and explode it. So by exploding it, we change it from an image into this is now just a material with a leaf pattern applied to it. So what that means, we can just come in here, we can just cut this shape right out. So rather than tracing over top and making a new face like we did last time, we're just going to go right in here and actually kind of like, like a kind of picture of a magazine, we're just going to do that. So I'm going to do that differently. Last time we did it with arcs and lines, I'm going to use the freehand tool. So I'm going to start up here and I'm not going to, I am not going to kill myself trying to make this a perfect outline. We want a leaf type shape. It's going to be a background item. So I'm not going to really get in here and worry about an insane amount of details, but I do want my line to stay mostly inside the red leaf color. Um, I don't know if you guys, how often anybody watching uses the freehand tool, but I can't remember what version it was, maybe it was 2020, uh, 21 maybe. There are a couple of versions ago this new version of the freehand tool came out and I gotta say, I have really enjoyed using it since it got uh, reset. So before could, the older version would be maybe a little bit choppy and not super accurate and uh, never bad, but not something that I added to my regular workflow. It's still not something I use a lot of, I'll be totally honest. But when I do have to go in here and trace geometry around like this, uh, I don't mind using this at all. Oh, I'm just gonna connect that back up with the line. There we go, so there we go, I cut that out. I'm gonna do one more thing, I'm gonna come in here, do one more freehand line here to kind of get it us some stem. It is an important part of leaf, one of two parts. There we go, so I just ran that long and I'll just delete these extra edges. And now to get the leaf free from the background, we'll just delete the edges of the original image. And there we go. So I got that going there. All right, so one of the reasons, well, the, the only reason I made this other piece, so I can go ahead and explode this too. What I want is, I want, so see how it's lined up perfectly right now? Looks good. Um, I wanna make sure I maintain this material. So if I pick over here, pick this texture, I wanna keep this as a projected texture, 
and I want to make sure that that way if the texture moves or something on me, I can always go back to the original texture. I know it's going to move because I'm going to take this what is now a flat surface and start bending it and it's going to potentially shift the material. By knowing that I have this material back here to fall back to, I can always sample this, reapply it here, project it, and everything will be good. So I'm going to go ahead and grab this, make it a group real quick. I'm not worried about making a component right now because uh, I'm going to be exploding and regrouping it. This is a temporary uh, container right here. I'm going to go to Tools, grab True Bend, bend it the first direction, enter, looks good, grab it, rotate it, and just like last time, I'm going to explode it, make it a group again, because True Bend always bends along the red axis, so I'm going to go in here, True Bend, and bend it the second direction, looks good, enter, and here's what I'm talking about, look at that, almost immediately, like I knew what was coming, you know, like, like, like I know what I'm doing sometimes. It's a little scary. All right, I'm going to take that, rotate it back upwards. And if I look at this straight on, in fact, let's, let's do this. Let's look at it really like literally straight on. Let's go to camera, turn parallel projection on. Um, and you can see that we're pretty close. Let's, let's go to camera standard and look at the front view. So we'll line up perfectly. You can see see how by bending it, distorting that geometry, we did make geometry that went outside of the original outline. So what we're gonna do is I'm going to go ahead and explode it again. I can do it right from this view actually. Uh, we're gonna scale it. No, I can't do it because I gotta get the handle. Uh, we're gonna scale about the middle and just kind of squash it down. So, Just a little bit more. You gotta squash down just a little bit more so that that is all inside the. There we go. All right, there we go. So now it leaves mostly inside there. So now what we can do to reapply this, I gotta get rid of that perspective. Ooh, oh boy. Take me back to perspective. Projection has done work for my brain. All right, so now all we have to do to get that back on there is say, pick this, apply to this, and there we go. It's stretched back out. I got a little piece hung over there, but you know what, here's what I'll do. Let me see my edges. I'm cheat and make this simple. I'll just cut off the piece that doesn't line up. There we go. Still works. Still still got still got a leaf looks like a leaf. Alright. Looks good. That's awesome. Love it. Um Probably need to fix the back too, so we'll go ahead and reapply the back too. We'll pick this. Apply, oops, get rid of those. Pick this. All right, looks good. Uh, let's take this further. I like where this is going, but let's go. Let's go a little bit beyond this. I'm going to grab this piece and I'm just going to make a copy of it over here. I'm going to, if I look at my materials right now, uh, I have this material in here, so I'm going to grab this one and I'm going to say, make this one unique. So I'll get a new texture. And now with that one selected, I'm going to come in here and say, make that uh, less red and we're going to go more orangey yellowy. Whoops, I didn't do it right. I... There we go. Now I double, double click on the material. Let's go make that yellow. Zoom in. A little, little brighter even. Love it. Look at that. So now I got this color and this color. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to sample this material apply it, oops, I was around the wrong, wrong one. Pick that and apply it to the back of that one. Oops, that was not, not projected. Change that back to projected. Pick that and then apply it here. Now, let me actually get rid of these. Now I don't need these. Now we got a component with leafy looking stuff on both sides. Now we'll take it, make it a component. Uh, let's call it something like leaf. And also let's, uh, let's make this a more realistic size. Shall we? There we go. Cool. And now I'm going to come over here and make a yard. And let's, since we're playing with, with, uh, colors here. Let's go ahead and put some landscaping. Let's throw a little grass on here. 
And now I'm going to select this piece and this surface. And from random tools, I'm going to put uh, scatter, I uh, place components randomly on faces. And how many do I put on? Let's put like, I don't remember how many I put before. Maybe it's like 400, 400. Um, spin them around 360 degrees, yeah. Scale variance, maybe, maybe 1.2, something like that. Um, and I'll go ahead and hit okay. And then we'll get something that looks like, well, they all stood up. I don't like that at all. It's like they're coming at, coming after me. All right, let's do this. Let's take our, our first one. Let's, uh, let's rotate that flat. All right, now we'll take that and randomly apply to surfaces. Same settings as before. And let's just drop that on there. Okay, that's better. That's only spin in one direction, but it's getting there. It's getting close. Undo one last try. Um, actually, what we could do is place those and then we could select all those minus the face. We could take all of those now and we could randomize them again. Um, and then go a little bit further and make them even randomer, randomier. Um, I don't know. Now I'm just playing. Now I'm just having fun here. Um, I think the distance off the ground is because I rotated that and moved it up. But uh, yeah, I kind of feel like I want to do like five or six times as much as I just did. Um, all right. Last play. Last time playing. All right. So I'm going to take this, drop it here. I'm going to explode it and make it a new group. I tend to do that. Uh, explode and reset just to reset any any uh, movement I've made inside the component or where the axis might be or anything like that. Select these two, place that randomly. Um, let's go even bigger. Let's go 600 copies. Uh, let's see, flip it over 180 degrees. Orientation. Now let's try up and see what happens. Let's go for it. What's the worst that could happen? My leaves won't look good. I can handle that. All right, so there we go. That that worked much better. Putting the right size definitely helped. Uh, didn't flip them over. That's interesting. I'll have to play with that a little bit more. But but there you go, Teddy. Why don't you go walk through the leaves? Oh, I'm getting like crunchy noises in my head. I love it. Cool. So there we go. So yeah, a different level of leaves. Uh, it's not a pile, but we probably could have done that. We could have actually applied to a dome or something. We could have gotten a pile of leaves. But there you go. A uh, little 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 different level of uh, some autumn leaves there and uh, using the exact same tools we used last time based on your input. So I say this every time, but we really do read every single comment you guys make on any of our videos. So whether they're live models, shorts, or these weekly videos, uh, we read every single one. We don't always apply, reply to everyone. We don't make a video based on every single comment, but we do see it all. Um, if you have good content in there or good requests in there, that's something that we can make. Um, meaning if you ask for a change to the software, our video team can't do a whole lot with that other than maybe pass it on. But if you ask for a variance of a video or a different workflow, something like that, we write that down. And uh, when it comes time to you know look at content to create, we, we keep that in mind. So keep making comments, we'll keep making videos. And if you haven't already done so, click like down below, appreciate that and subscribe. If you've made it this far in the video, you probably like our content. We'll keep making it and you'll be notified when it comes out if you subscribe. Most importantly, like I said, leave us a comment. I like making these videos a lot. We like them even more when they're showing something you want to see. Thank you.